Before we get into the meat of today's lesson, let's talk terminology for a second. For the purpose of this and the following tutorials, MongoDB is our database server, not our database. Within MongoDB, you will find one or more databases. For example, I might have a CloseBrace database that contains all of the data that CloseBrace.com uses, tutorials, users, etc. On the same MongoDB server, I might also have other databases in which I keep data unrelated to CloseBrace, such as the data for my current freelance client's applications. Additionally, MongoDB typically generates the admin and test databases by default when you install it. We're going to ignore those for now, though I'm happy to cover MongoDB administration slash authentication if people want it. Anyway, inside a given database such as CloseBrace, you will find collections of data, which are roughly analogous to tables in SQL. A lot of people use these collections to form pseudo-relational structures. For example, you might have a user's database which contains your user objects, and those user objects might refer to ID numbers from a books database, indicating what books those users own. You don't have to use MongoDB like this, as its document-driven nature allows for nesting objects just like JavaScript, but we're going to use it in this manner because it's convenient. So, database server holds multiple databases, each of which contain one or more collections of objects. Cool? We're going to create a JSQH database and in it a users collection. An important thing to understand about how MongoDB works is that, unlike SQL databases, it's unstructured. This is oversimplifying things somewhat, but you can essentially feed it any valid JSON and it'll store the data. So here are two possible user objects. If we tell MongoDB to add each of these objects to our user collection, its response will be, OK. That's sometimes very useful, but it can also easily lead to Catastrophic Atrocious Data Spaghetti Syndrome, or CADS, an acronym I definitely did not just make up. This is one of several reasons why data modeling is a really good idea. With Mongoose, we can control our data, normalizing what we put into our database, and throwing errors if our application tries to stray from those bounds. This helps keep our data clean and helps protect against any hoodlums trying to do nefarious things to our database. So we've got a node application up and running, and we added Mongoose to our node modules. Let's wire it up. CD to wherever you're keeping your app, which, if you followed the instructions last week, will be in a mongo-test directory. Start it up with nodemon npm start, which I've already done, and then flip over to your text editor. Add that directory to your project, which, again, I've already done, and open up app.js. You'll see here a bunch of the initial express scaffolding stuff, which we've described before. Up at the top is a list of required modules. This list is not alphabetized, which fills me with rage, so I like to alphabetize it. Then I add the following line in an appropriately alphabetical spot. Then I drop down a few lines, and below this one, I add the following two. That all looks pretty great. We've connected and assigned a variable to our connection that we can pass around our app and reuse. Now let's add a couple of functions that Mongoose recommends for testing and error catching. Add a padding line if you so choose, and add this code. Go ahead and save that. All right, I'm getting a connection error here because I'm running Docker which has created a separate instance of MongoDB that requires authentication. So there's going to be a non-existent pause for you, but probably a lengthy pause for me as I turn off Docker and establish a local MongoDB. One second. All right, well, that was tedious, but we're all set now. We have a working Mongo instance, and you can see you can refresh the page. If you kill the app entirely, start it again we get our Mongo connection established message. If you're getting a connection error instead, like I was, first off, make sure your MongoDB server is running at all. If it is running, then, well, we can't turn this into a tech support video, so let's just hope it's running. The next thing we need to talk about is creating a schema. Schemas tell Mongoose what properties a data object will have, and the variable type or types these properties should contain. They're not quite models, which are a separate thing in Mongoose that use schemas in their construction, but they're close enough for now. We're going to keep things very simple for now. First, open slash routes slash users.js. And after the two require lines, add this one. 
Below those lines, but above everything else, add this code. There we go. We're now telling Mongoose that the incoming data for creating a user, for the purposes of this tutorial, will include four variables, one of which is a number, and the other three of which are strings. This means if we pass data that doesn't fit this model, Mongoose won't allow it to be added to the database, although it may still create the entry with whatever data does fit the schema. Note that we're not passing an ID here. MongoDB will create a unique one for us, which is all kinds of handy. Alright, I know everyone's excited to actually create some data, but unfortunately this tutorial is getting too long. Next week, we'll create a quick form, wire it up, and show you how to check your DB to see whether it's working. See you then!